You know, the Google Nest Hub is one of my top 10 favorite smart home purchases. They sound pretty decent, especially for their size. And they work with so many smart home devices. And if you use Home Assistant, you can sync it with all of your Home Assistant devices as well as your Home Assistant automations. So Google really packed these Nest Hubs with a ton of features. And I think one of the most underused features is that you can use a Nest Hub as a display that you can cast to. I think the hope was that people would watch YouTube cooking videos while they were in the kitchen, but I don't know anyone who does that. But that takes me to Cat. So Cat works with Home Assistant and it allows you to cast anything from Home Assistant. But you could create an automation that say played your favorite YouTube video in the morning, but you can also cast web pages like a Home Assistant dashboard. So let's get started. Now one thing you need to know is your Wi-Fi LAN address. It is probably 192.168.86, unless you changed it. But if you wanna double check, you can always do a quick Google search to see how to find your router's LAN address. Another thing you need to know is your Home Assistant username and password. So first thing we need to do is under the supervisor panel, go to snapshots. We wanna create a full snapshot here. And once it's done, you need to download your snapshot. There is honestly a very good chance you will lock yourself out of your home assistant setup. And if you mess up just one step, you have to start all over with a brand new home assistant install and refresh from your snapshot. Trust me, it can happen three times. Now, once you have your downloaded snapshot, we can go back to the add-on store in the supervisor panel. And then scroll down until you find SSH and web terminal. Don't use terminal and SSH. Trust me on this one. Now install it, and I select everything. Start on boot, watchdog, auto update, show in sidebar, and protection mode. And then go to configuration and add a username and password. Now when I install a new package, I like to restart my home assistant server, but that's up to you. Now once your server is back online, let's go to the terminal tab. And here we're gonna type in PIP3 install C-A-T-T -T and hit enter. Now this should just take a few seconds and then type cat scan and hit enter. Now this will look for all your Chromecast devices on your network. It shows their IP addresses as well as their names, which we only need the names for this instance. So to see everything CAT can do, let's type CAT minus H. And as you can see, it has a ton of options. So let's test by casting a web page. Type CAT minus D, quote, kitchen display, end quote. And the thing to note is that kitchen is capitalized while display isn't. Cast underscore site. Check it out. I mean, yeah, you know, a little shameless plug here, but check it out. It's like a working website. I mean, you can't go backwards because if you try to go backwards, you're just going to actually clear away the cast. But it's the idea that it works. So we're on the right track. So let's go to your configuration panel and scroll down to the users section. I created a new user called Google Cast User, and I did not give it administrator permissions, but you can call it whatever you like. I didn't give this user administrator permissions since it's gonna be accessible for anyone in my house. So if I have any guests over, I don't want them accidentally destroying something. So let's go to our file editor and make sure we are editing our configuration file. So scroll down to the bottom, and I like to label my sections. So I start with pound or hashtag, cat, cast all the things. This will just help me find that section if I need to make any changes later. Now I'll include the basic code in the description as well as my written guide, but we're gonna type in home assistant semicolon, auth providers semicolon, type trusted networks. And then you're gonna type in your Wi-Fi LAN address, followed by 0, 
slash 24. Now it is important that you end in slash 24, but keep in mind what this does is this opens your entire Wi-Fi network. So anyone connected to your Wi-Fi network can connect to your Home Assistant account without needing to enter in a password. That's why it's important to have your guest Wi-Fi network separate from your Home Assistant network. I then added allow bypass login true and type Home Assistant. Now you can select just certain IP addresses to work with this, such as say just our Nest Hub devices. Also, we can only allow certain users to enter in without entering a password, such as the new one we made that doesn't have administrative permissions. Save your changes in your file editor. And let's go to our configuration panel and go to our server controls to check our configuration. If it all checks out, restart your server. If it worked, it would appear as if nothing has changed, which is good. We can double check this though by closing our browser window and reopening Home Assistant. You may have to re-log back in, which is why it's important to know your Home Assistant password. If you are locked out, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to reinstall Home Assistant and restore from your snapshot. It sucks, believe me. I know, I've done it more than once. Now for those who weren't locked out, we're ready to go to the next step. So let's go to a dashboard that we want to cast, and we're going to copy the URL. Now if yours says homeassistant.local, we will have to change something, but it's okay, we'll get back to that later. Now go to the terminal tab and type cat minus D, kitchen display, cast underscore site. and then paste your Lovelace URL. And if yours says homeassistant.local, type in your IP address. And then press enter. First time you do this, you will have to select a username. And if you have a dark mode theme turned on, it can be kind of hard to see, but it's there. Also, I recommend selecting Stay Logged In. This automation is courtesy of John2014 from the Home Assistant Forum. I left a link to the forum in the post. Now let's go to our file editor, and this time we're going to create a file. You can call this whatever you want, but John called his example cast.sh. I'll leave this code in the description as well as my written guide. Now obviously we want to change the name of the cast device as well as what Lovelace dashboard we want to cast. Now this part of a script is genius because it removes the beep that happens whenever you begin casting your Lovelace dashboard. Press save and then let's go to our configuration panel and create a new automation. Name your automation. And for mode, choose restart. Set trigger type to time pattern and slash 10 minutes. For actions, choose call service and select hasio.addon underscore stdin. And choose ssh and web terminal. Then edit in YAML and add input bash in your file. Save and test your automation. One last thing that I added is when you're logged in as a non-administrator account, the dashboard shows up as kiosk mode, preventing anyone from accidentally stumbling onto a dashboard that I don't really want them messing with. But there you have it, a working interactive home assistant panel and the Google voice detection still works and you can dismiss it at any time. Now I understand it was a long walk for a short drink of water, but I'm sure several of you are already thinking of great uses for this. So what are you waiting for? Go get started and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and I forgot to mention it works with regular Chromecast too. 
More information on that in another video. All right, be good to one another.